Hi there! Welcome to Perfect Base. Today we will learn how to set up a formatter and a linter for a Node.js project. Those are very important tools that will speed up development and avoid bugs by making sure that you and your team write a clean code. First, let me introduce you the formatter. A formatter is a tool that will fix your code styling automatically. For this, we're gonna be using Prettier. Prettier is one of the most widely used formatters out there. It can be used in many languages, it's highly configurable and easily integrated with most code editors. You can set up your own rules or use some recommended configuration from other projects. How about the linter? A linter is a tool that will do a static check of your code to find problems. ESLint is usually the go-to linter for a Node.js project. Some simple examples of linter rules you can set are max lines per function or max complexity of a function. And the best part is that it is integrated with your code editor, so that you can see the problems without having to actually run the lint command. And you can also lint your code as part of your continuous integration pipeline, so that if there are any linting problems, you won't even be able to build your code. Ok, enough with the explanation. Let's do a setup demo. For the demo, we'll be using VS Code as our code editor. Here we have a very basic TypeScript project. The only packages we have are TypeScript itself and TSNode so that we can run our TypeScript code without having to manually build it first. The tsconfig is also basic, with only the minimal necessary configurations for the project. And here we have our sample code. We can run it by using tsnode. You can clearly see some problems just by looking at the code. For example, we have some line breaks and additional spaces that we shouldn't have. And some indentation problems as well. There are also some other problems that are not so evident, but we'll get to that later. So, let's start by taking care of the formatter. First, we'll start by installing the Prettier extension for VS Code. For that, we just search it up on the Extensions tab and click Install. Now, we need to configure our editor to use this extension. For this, just press F1 and search for your workspace settings. Now we're gonna search for Formatter and change the default formatter to Prettier. Let's also check the Format on Save setting so that our code gets automatically formatted every time that we save the file. I like to do this kind of configuration in the workspace setting because it creates a configuration file in your project that you can commit it to Git and make sure everyone in your team uses the same configuration. But if you only work on solo projects, feel free to use the user configuration instead. Ok, now if you go back to our dirty code and just press Ctrl S to save it, you can see that it already got a lot better. To customize our formatter settings, we can create a .prettierrc file and enter our own rules on it. Now, if we go back and save the file again, it will get formatted with the new rules. Ok, for now I'm gonna go back to how the file was at the beginning. And here's a little tip. If, for some reason, you want to save the file without using the formatter, you can press F1 and search for Save Without Formatting. And that will do it. There are still some things I want to do with the formatter, but for now, let's configure the linter. Before we start with the ESLint configuration, we can configure some static checking on the TypeScript configuration itself. I like to use the strict configuration. Just by doing this, we can see that the IDE is already complaining here because we have a parameter with an implicit any type. Now, go into the ESLint configuration. We'll start the same way, by searching the extension and installing it. But this time, to make it work, we need to install some NPM packages. Let's start by installing the TypeScript ESLint parser and the TypeScript ESLint ESLint plugin. I use the D flag and the E flag here. The D flag is to install the package as a dev dependency, 
so it won't be included in the production bundle, since it's a tool only used for development purposes. The E flag is something that I always like to use, so that the package versions get spinned. That means that if, in the future, you run npm install on another computer, the same package versions will get installed. It's good, since even minor version upgrades can introduce bugs to your project. Bugs you won't even know where it came from, so usually I upgrade my packages manually when I feel necessary. Ok, now we can create our eslint configuration file. This will be a JavaScript file called .eslintrc.js. Let's configure the parser and use the TypeScript plugin to configure eslint with recommended rules for TypeScript. You might need to reload your VS Code for the changes to take effect. For that, just press F1 and search for Reload Window. By doing so, we can already see some problems. Some unused variables and functions are present in the code. We can also see the linting errors in all files by running the eslint command. This allows us to add a linting step to our continuous integration pipeline, so that the code won't even get to the build step if it doesn't pass the lint check. Usually, we will put this on our npm scripts, so that we can run it by using npm run lint. Before we fix our code, I want to do some interesting configuration. I want to set up Prettier inside eslint, so that we can see the formatting problems on the IDE, and so that they can actually get considered as an error. To do so, we are going to install two other npm packages. ESLint plugin prettier and ESLint config prettier. Now we just have to add prettier as an ESLint plugin. As soon as we save it, we can already see errors on the screen. This is the formatter complaining about line break codes. To fix that, we can go back to our prettier configuration and set the end of line configuration to auto. You might need to reload your screen again. Going back to the code, we can see that the prettier problems are displayed on the IDE as errors. There is just one more thing I'd like to do about that. Here, we are using the formatter to prettify our code on save, but we can do the same thing by using the linter instead. And some reasons we would like to do that are because we can have some override or some ignored files on the eslint configurations, or we might have some other problems that can be automatically fixed by the linter. To set this up, firstly we will disable the format on save for TypeScript and JavaScript files. Now we're gonna add a save action to fix the eslint problems. By doing so, if we go back and save the file, the problems that can be automatically fixed, like the prettier problems, will get fixed. We're almost finished with our setup. But if we want, we can add some rules to the linter. One rule I like to have is the consistent return rule. By looking at our code, we can see that this function has a problem with that. If it goes inside the if statement, it will return our string, but if it doesn't, it actually doesn't return anything. And this can cause some unexpected behavior on our code. Fixing the problems of our code would look something like this. There is a lot more customization that we can do. For example, we can use overrides to have different rules for JavaScript and TypeScript. Or we could use an eslint ignore file to, well, ignore files we don't want to lint. And that will be it for the tutorial today. I really hope you enjoyed and got some new information out of it. If you liked it, please leave a like, and if you're interested in future content, don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Mata nem.